worship. Uh, typically, uh, we say, look what the cat dragged in, but look what the train dragged in. <laughs> We're so glad we waited for you. This is so good. Uh, good that everyone's here. And we've got some youth in the house. This is wonderful. Awesome. We've uh, got a few announcements, just for starters. Today's service is, uh, as you are well aware, hydro-free. Uh, as we illuminate the sanctuary, however, with these tea lights everywhere uh, on the window ledges. We almost had hoped for a, a duller morning so that they would be clear, more clearly seen. However, it's, uh, it's clearly evident uh, that these are here in a remembrance of, our, of the, the graves that were first discovered in Kamloops the 215 plus, and the project that we are uh, coming to an end with today. We will hear a little bit later from Laura that tally. Yeah, actually, I gave it back to her, so you can do it. Yeah. Uh, today's service is not only Orange Shirt Sunday, uh, but it's also Plant So Act, which is our our second stewardship series. So if you're wondering, if you, you weren't here last week and you're wondering why there's a tree in the, in the house, um, you'll find that, uh, you'll find out soon enough what that's about. For anyone who is interested in going on a hike today and you've packed a little lunch, uh, we aren't having lemonade on the lawn today. We are going straight to Greens Lake for a hike and a quick bite on the trail. Okay, so everyone is welcome to join us. Uh, we hold in our prayers today, as we as we do with the within the United uh, within the Canadian Shield, and we are praying today for Lions Memorial United Church in Gore Bay, as well as St. Paul's United Church in Cochrane. So we keep them in our prayers during our prayers of the people. And as I mentioned, today is our last service for our 215 plus project. And Laura will have that information for us. Which will be quite interesting because we've got some folks in here that have done some, some uh, extreme contributing. And finally, this coming Thursday is actually September 30th and our National Indigenous Day. Uh, in the Atlantic School of Theology, where I go to school, it is closed on this day. However, our chapel service is still operating. It's still running. We have a chapel every Thursday morning. What's going to happen is everyone is invited back here on Thursday morning. Be here for quarter to 11. The service will start at 11, but we are going to, we're going to watch the Atlantic School of Theology's chapel service. And... We're here going to hear from the moderator, the Right Reverend Richard Bott, who is going to preach during that service. So it's a, it's a special service that day, so please, anyone who is available and can come, uh, let's, let's fill the sanctuary with the amount that we are allowed. <laughs> Thursday morning. Oh, yes. Uh, grab your shakers. Yeah, you know, numbers, whatever you have, it's number two in more voices. We did this one last week, so I hope you remember the Shona language as well as the English. So we do Shona English, Shona English. <laughs> Oh, 
Before we move into lighting the Christ candle, I just have one more announcement. Um, we gathered in the sanctuary on Friday morning to uh, celebrate the life of Lisa Herbert, and we received a thank you card from Lisa's daughter, Jen, and it is uh, beautifully written on a Trinity United Capriol special card, and it is, in type, it is uh, specifically sketched from 1999 by Sheila Sweet. Sorry, Ida Sweet. Ida Sweet. So, uh, a beautiful note. Um, I will, um, this hopefully, I guess we put it, make it available. I'm going to put it on the projection next week. Oh, fantastic. Great. As well, she shared some uh, other old cards. I guess she was going through her mom's things. One where the wood is still on the church. Uh, where the manse is showing, so um, these will be displayed, as Faye said, next Sunday. Uh, let's uh, join together in worship and hear the lighting of the Christ candle. As we gather to worship, we light this candle to remember the light and love that Jesus shared with so many. He did not keep this light to himself. Jesus shared it with his friends, and after Jesus died, his friends continued to share the light with their friends. For generations upon generations, the light has been shared, and love continues. Jesus is still with us. Today in love, we welcome the light, the light of the world. Long before those of us who are settlers and those who are descendants of settlers came to this land, there were people here. Many nations of people lived and still live on this land we call Canada. Given responsibility by the creator of the stewards of this land and all that lives on it, we know these people as indigenous. Today, as we remember what it means to love our neighbors, let us give thanks for the indigenous people of this land and let us remember what we worship God on this historic territory of the Wampate First Nation. As Christ's people, let us be the people of love, of truth, and reconciliation. What have you brought to give today? We have brought our hopes and our fears. What have you brought to give today? We have brought our joys and our sorrows. What have you brought to give today? We have brought our prayers and our voices. What have you brought to give today? We have brought our talents and our money. Let us give all of ourselves in this time of worship. Let us worship with gratitude and joy. Let us worship God. This prayer was written by Reverend Catherine Stewart she is a regional minister for children, youth, and young adults. This prayer is entitled, A Reconciliation Prayer for Children. It's a poem. Let's pray. God, we try to love your world as you would have us do, to see all of creation as good and sacred too. Sometimes our view gets clouded and we lose our way. Help us to say we're sorry and to mean what we say. Let Jesus be our leader so that we might know your heart, that your spirit brings us courage to work together, not apart. Amen. We're going to hear and sing our theme song for this stewardship series called This Indescribable Gift.
keep that, we can pass it on to someone else. You might have been in a Tim Hortons line at one point or another where someone's paid it forward or wherever you might have been. Yeah, paying it forward. There is that for sure. So today, when we think about the harvest that we have, it's our harvest time. We plant seeds, we produce a harvest. We produce. So what we'll do today is the products of our actions are, we want to write them on the leaves. So if you think about the gifts that you have, that, you've been, that you share, now I'd like you to take your leaf and write as many things as you can think of that are the reactions that maybe someone has felt or in something that you've done as a gift. Let's say, let's say um, I'm confident that, that Faye wrote that one of her gifts is her gift of music. So I'm sure that she has got a load of experiences that have taken place because she's shared that gift. So think about those for a few minutes and, and take some time and write them down on your leaf. Don't worry if you weren't here last week to plant a seed. We all have gifts that God has given us. seeds and today when you leave the sanctuary please stop at the harvest jar and you're going to put your leaves in the harvest jar and next week you will find those leaves on this poor sad barren tree <laughs> <laughs> next we're going to hear from Arlene and Peyton Arlene has written a prayer so we're going to pray God is. God is the feeling of the roots and the earth as I attempt to bring life to my garden. God is the sight of the first bloom. God is the pride I feel as I pick the vegetables. God is the joy of washing the vegetables in preparation of the feast. God is the satisfaction of filling my body and mind with the food he has provided to me. God, God is. is. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Arlene, for your gift you. of words. We're now going to sing, and folks know this. Uh, it is number... 92. Like a rock, like a rock.
a stewardship moment. As I mentioned at the beginning, um, this, is a, this is a service of story sharing and song. So we're going to hear from Christina, we're going to hear from Peyton, we're going to hear from Matt, and we're going to hear from Arlene. And we're going to hear why they give of their time, their talents, and their treasures. So we're going to start with Christina. Hello everybody. As you guys know, I'm Christina. I work with the lovely youth here and children in all aspects of my life. Uh, when it comes to my faith, I first started out not in the United Church, but with the Roman Catholic Church. After some bad times, I had stepped away from the church. When I moved to Sudbury, I had a couple good friends from the child sector tell me, hey, you should come help us out at St. James. So, off I went, because I love to help out. Eight years later, I'm now at Trinity. Unfortunately, at St. James, there just wasn't any youth. And when Tracy left here, Faye, very silently, <laughs> put the bug in my ear that my gifts would be best used here. And boy, do I agree now. Since I've started, I've seen the youth grow. I've seen the impact that they have had not just in our community, but in communities all across our region. Through many of our youth groups, they've left an impact. Whether it's telling stories, sense of humor, or one of our youth who carried around a sign all through the streets of Sault Ste. Marie, letting people know that they are loved. And I can see the reaction from that. One gentleman in particular, who's walking down the street looking very sad and sorrowed. Our youth, Johnny, walked up to him and gave him a little note that said, no matter what, you are loved. We ran into that gentleman later on and he wasn't having the best day. He was very down and questioning life and that little piece of paper turned things around for him. And Johnny knows that. And he still holds a thank you letter from this gentleman with them every day. Those are the reasons why I like to share. It's not for me, but to see the impact of our youth, to see the joy and the inspiration in them that it brings, and to others, and the change that they can make in this world. When I first started in the church, there was a very thought that children should be heard, or seen and not heard. And boy, is that different here. Our youth are encouraged to speak up and to share their talents, and I love that. I love that our home makes it a safe place for our youth, and I hope that continues. So that's why I share, is to make a difference in the world in our youth and the children of today. Thank you, Christina. Amen. Uh, we're now going to hear from Peyton. Nan told me about the church raising money for the indigenous healing fund we decided we wanted to donate money to. So Nan made about 20 orange bookmarks with orange shirts on them. I decorated them with some yarn and a charm and a charm in the shape of a child. I took them to the market two Saturdays People donated, donated money to the fund and got a bookmark. I sold them all and collected $120 for the healing fund. The healing fund is for the survivors of the residential school of the residential schools and the parents whose children whose children were killed at the schools. It was important for me to help because it is important to have to help people have a better life. Thank you, Peyton. Now we'll hear from Matt as he shares. Hello. As many as you know, I am Matthew. I am part Cree. My family is from Constance Lake, First Nations. This part 
this past year, I have had the honor of taking part in the filming of the 35th anniversary of the Apology to the Indigenous People from the United Church. During this time, and with the discovery of the residential school children, I heard a lot of people or make stories. This makes me sad and upset of hearing what my people have gone through. And if I was born at that time, I could have been taken away from my family, doing other activities, and forget who I am. By taking part in this different activities, I hope to bring awareness of the stories of indigenous people. Then we can make move forward and with a better understanding of truth and reconciliation. Thank you, Max. And we'll hear from Arlene. Pam asked if I could tell you my story on how I came up with the idea for the pins. And I all wound up here. Um, I would like to say that the idea came to me in a dream. But that's not what happened. <laughs> the idea came to me at a church council meeting of all places. Our supervising pastor, Linda Todd, mentioned that her church was making the shirts as a fundraiser. I jumped on it. I loved the idea so much, I asked her, actually I asked her if I could steal the idea, but let's say I asked for permission to use the idea. Um, and I think it was a good one. And, and it meant a lot to me because out of that came that. I give because it's in me to give. I think I was born with the giving spirit. Um, I like to teach people how to give. I like to teach people how to share my talents. And I like to learn how to share their work theirs in return. I give so that my grandchildren and my children can learn that giving makes you very, very happy. It clears or it clears my mind when I'm feeling down. If I'm feeling really down, I make something for somebody. Just because. And when they get that gift, just because, I'm hoping that it makes them feel as special as I think they are. Um, I think I give because God said to me, you are my giver. And I hope that, that I can continue on. Thank you. We all have a story. Thank you so much for your offerings this morning. And in continuing in that same vein, last week there were some groups that were commissioned, commissioned uh, to go out into the world, go out into the communities from this church, the work that we do here, that there is an acknowledgement and that there is a sending out. And we laid hands as close as we could. We reached out our hands. We laid hands on, on folks in different groups last week. And today, we're going to acknowledge, firstly, we're going to, I'm going, I'm going to say them all, and then we're going to do one laying of hands. So today we recognize and commission all of those working in Christian education at Trinity for our youth and children's leadership, folks in a leadership position. You have a deep desire to connect us all together for adult Bible study, for encouraging folks to attend the Manitou Intentional Learning events, for labyrinth activities. I, I know two in this space who spent some time over at the labyrinth uh, making a bit of a, a video. <laughs> you, the time that you spend. For encouraging youth mental health events for all who serve in Christian education. 
we now hold this space. We also recognize today all of those who work in fundraising at this church that supports the life and the work here. To the property committee for your diligence in the care and the upkeep of this precious space that we love. For to us, it's much more than bricks and mortar, isn't it? We too recognize and commission today the Trinity trustees for their responsibilities for church investments. And lastly today, we recognize and commission the work of the treasurer for the number cruncher, for their trust and their care in this work. We now collectively join together. So put your hands out, close your eyes, and as if you are that close to these folks. Through the laying of these hands and praying a blessing, we convey a powerful message as Christ's followers, that you activate the unique gifts and calling that God has given. Amen. Before we go further, we have one announcement to be made by our treasurer regarding the the funds that have been raised to date for our 215 plus project. And Laura, if you would share that with us, that would be fantastic. Okay, at the council meeting about three months ago, it was brought up that they wanted every congregation to donate $215 for the healing fund. Our council decided that it's easy to just write a check for $215, send it off, forget all about it. And this is kind of how the fundraising would come into effect because we decided that we would raise funds, we would ask donations from the congregation just to see how much we could get, even if we could get the $215. So I am very proud to announce that we have $1,000. Wow, $1,376 for the Healing Fund. Wow. So good. So we have one more commissioning to do here, so I'm going to ask Pastor Pam to come just out a little bit to the top there. That's good. And I invite you to hold your hands out. God, we ask your blessing on Pastor Pam Brown on her work as a student minister of word, sacrament, and pastoral care. We ask your blessing on Pam as she leads us and as she continues her studies. God, help us as your congregation to attend to the word she preaches, to spread farther the pastoral care that she offers, and to participate with joy and commitment in the sacraments over which she presides. May Pam feel the love and encouragement as we journey together with her. Through the laying on of hands and praying a blessing on this minister, we convey a powerful message as Christ's followers that you activate the unique gifts and callings that you've been given. Amen. And now for a time of Thanksgiving gratitude and mission. Today we give thanks for the Canadian Shield's Right Relations Team, the Right Relations Resource Team. Their goal is to develop, support, and nurture just and respectful relationships between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples. Being in right relationships ultimately means respecting the sacredness of all life. We believe this is God's longing for the earth community and even for the universe. We believe this is God's longing. The focus of right relationship building in the Canadian Shield Regional Council. 
is on, is on learning how to walk with respect as indigenous and non-indigenous people. We give humble gratitude for the gifts this team shares with the whole Canadian Shield for use with all of the communities of faith in the United Church. Trinity Capriol takes, this takes these resources and sows the seeds of learning. We see the reaction to this learning in the work being done by the likes of Matthew, Peyton, Arlene. We also are grateful for the work of our beloved treasurer, Laura, and we are grateful for <laughs> the announcement that we've just heard regarding the 215 plus project and the healing fund. We give grateful thanks. We're now going to hear from Matthew as he provides a moment for right relations. And if you can imagine for a moment while Matthew reads, I don't know, quietly, you're going to hear the, the drumming of, of Marilyn. Marilyn was, was going to be here today and she couldn't, so we're going to hear that drumming now. It was the mid-1990s that two friends asked if I would like to accompany them to a powwow. They knew that I had indigenous heritage on my father's side, Plains Creek from Saskatchewan, but that I had grown up in Sudbury with little exposure to my indigenous culture. I immediately said yes, and we headed out to Red Deer Lake, where the Nisnwamak Friendship Center was holding a powwow. When we got out of the car, we could hear the beating of a drum. It sounded like a magnet pulling me, I could feel throughout my body. When we reached the clearing, we saw uh, several large drums in the center with men seated around them, each group taking turns drumming and singing. A few women stood behind and sometimes joined in on the singing. I wondered why only men were drumming, because I felt a real connection and that was something that I would like to do. Every summer after I made sure to attend at least one powwow, after I retired, I decided it was time to find out more about my heritage. I took some native study courses at the University of Sudbury. I attended at a, an event at Laurentian University where the Grand Chief of the Assembly of the First Nations was speaking. Before he had started to speak, a group of women in long skirts and carrying hand drums walked in onto the stage. They introduced themselves and proceed to drum and sing to welcome someone. To welcome the chief to suffer and to the Laurentian University. Once again, I felt that pull of the drum and that feeling that I should be drumming was very strong. Shortly after that, a young woman in my class asked if I was interested in attending a drum making workshop. I immediately said yes. My sister, Shirley, and I attended the workshop. That was led by the Inashmi elder, Isabel Miswastich. From Serpent River, Isabel provided all the materials that we needed and showed us how to stretch wet deer hide over a round cedar frame, and then laced it together at the back. As we worked, she provided teachings about the drums. We learned that women was originally gifted the big drum and was also called the grandfather drum to the men, but that some younger women were beginning to drum at the big drum. Both men and women used the hand drum Women should wear a skirt, drumming, or attending a ceremony as it's a sign of respect. The hand drum is also a grandmother drum. It is a sacred item that should be treated with respect. As we would treat our grandmother drum, grandmother, sorry. We also learned our songs and prayers, and when we're drumming and singing, carrying those prayers 
drums into the creator. The beat of the drums connected our hearts beat to the beat of Mother Earth. Is another drum teaching. It explains why I felt the immediate pull of the drum shortly after making my drum. I joined the group of the Nuashme women and Wabish Kate Mwaka White Bear singers that I heard singing. Drumming became very important and a part of my life, filling something that was missing. I made, I made some good friends, learned more about my indigenous culture for women who had grown up with it. We drummed for joyous occasions, like birthdays and weddings, sad ones like funerals, and to mark important events such as graduation ceremonies, the truth and res reconciliation commission of and the 30th anniversary of the United Church of Apology to the First Nations people. We also tried and sang for healing when one of the group or someone we knew in need of physical or emotional support. The drum is very important, a part of our indigenous culture and spirituality. Thank you, Matt. And that again was written by Carol Germa, and she is a wind walker woman. Carol is from Sudbury. God is good. All the time. All the time. And all the time? God, God is, is good. good. Let's do that one more time. God is good. All, all the time. time. And all the time? God, God is good. good. As we offer our gifts today, let us give considering, uh, well, let us considering the magnitude of the needs that we are trying to help in this community and across Canada and around the world. Give with this in mind. The more you can give, the more lives you can impact. And every kind of gift in any amount makes a difference in the lives of those who have little or none. Today I invite you, if you do not have, if you have not already, to make a difference in the lives across Canada and around the world to the Mission and Service Fund. Please do so now. We're going to, uh, normally we pray a prayer of dedication, but today we're going to sing it, and it's called God Help Us to Treasure It. It's in More Voices, 1 to 47. <laughs>
Today our scripture reading is taken from the Inclusive Bible, from Matthew chapter 13, verses 31 to 32. Jesus presented another parable to the crowds. The kingdom of heaven is like the mustard seed, which a farmer sowed in the field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is the biggest shrub of all. It becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come to perch in its branches. Let's pray. God help us to stay focused. We may glance at watches and say, wow, she still hasn't preached her sermon yet. <laughs> God, give us grace. Give us patience. Help us to lean in and hear your word. Amen. The kingdom of God is like the mustard seed, the smallest of all seeds. Yet, when it has grown, becomes a tree so big that birds will come and perch in its branches. This is like our faith. And when we tell our stories, our stories, it encourages our faith to grow and helps others to grow their faith too. Today I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you a little story. It's a story written by David Robertson. It's called, When We Were Alone. I don't have the picture book and I don't have the words, just from what I know. <laughs> so I'm gonna clearly paraphrase this. David is from Winnipeg, from the Norway House Cree Nation. He wrote this story about a little girl named Noissim. And she's having a conversation with her grandma, Nokum. They're in, their, they're in the garden, they're in the backyard. And there's this large garden and it's full of beautiful flowers, so many colors. Colors like the rainbow. And Nokum is in the middle of it all. And her clothes are so brightly colored that she looks like a chameleon. You can't tell the difference. And Noissim says to her grandmother, Why do you wear such brightly colored clothes? And her Nokum said, Oh, when I was a little girl just like you, my friends and I wore really brightly colored clothes and made us happy. But when we went far away to school, our brightly colored clothes were taken from us and we were given black and white clothes. And Noissim leaned in curiously and said, why would they take your clothes? And they said they didn't want the brightly colored clothes, they wanted us to look the same. So, Nokum said, when we were alone and no one was around, we, in the fall, we would get a pile of leaves and we'd cover ourselves in our black and white clothes that looked like storm clouds. And we covered ourselves and we made our clothes colorful. And that made us happy. And that's why I wear these colorful clothes today. Nokum said. When they were finished their gardening, they headed over to the garden gate. The garden gate was filled with all these vines, and Nokum leaned down to click the latch, and Nosum noticed that Nokum's braid fell down her back. Looked like a big tail. And there was some asked, Nokum, why do you have such a, a long braid? And Nokum said, when I was a little girl just like you growing up, all my friends and I had long braids. Everybody in the community did. It was a sign of our strength and of our pride. But when I went away, far away to school, they cut off our braid. 
They cut off our brains. And the wisdom leaned in and said, why would they take, cut off your brains? And Nocum said, well, they wanted us to all look the same. So in the spring of the year, Nocum said, when nobody was watching, we'd go into the tall grass, and we'd pull the grass, and we'd tie it into each other's hair, and we would pretend that we were home, and it made us really happy. And that's why I have a long braid. They went on further into the, gar into the backyard, and they went to the bird feeder. And Noism could hear her grandmother saying in Cree to the birds, eat little birds, you'll grow big and strong. And it was a song. The words were like a song. And Noism asked her, Nokum, why do you speak Cree? And Nokum said, well, when I was a little girl, that's all we spoke was Cree. That's what our language was. But when I went away, far away to school, when we got there, there were lots of children from other communities and they spoke different languages. And we all together sounded like a bunch of crows. <laughs> so they said, you just speak one language. And Lewison said, wow, that must have been hard. And Nocum said, well, they wanted us to all be the same. And then they heard someone coming through the gate, and it was Nocum's brother, Noisim. They were sitting down, and they were going to have some, some tea and some sweet bannock. And Noism says, why is, why is Noism always here? <laughs> why is he always visiting? And Nogum said, well, he's my family. He's family. When I was a little girl growing up, we were surrounded by family, people we loved. When I went away to school, and when Noism went with me to school, they separated us like night and day. But when it got really cold, <laughs> we'd find each other outside. And we got close to each other, and we took off each other's mittens, and we held our hands, and we were able to reconnect. And that made us really happy. And that's why, as Noissim, And Nokum held hands together. He said, this is the way it's supposed to be. This is family. This is love. CBC's radio show called Unreserved interviewed the former senator and lead commissioner of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, Murray Sinclair, yesterday. And he discussed how far Canada has come on reconciliation and how much more we have to do. Sinclair reflected on our journey to reconciliation. And I encourage you to watch and listen to this broadcast. He shared, not only are our eyes being opened, but our heads are being turned. The former commissioner added, that the uncovering of the full truth is a necessary part of this awakening. He added, the ones who would look away now can look away no longer. Is what happens when our seeds of courage, kindness, compassion, and generosity grow is this when we can no longer turn away? Is this when our seeds grow 
and turn into action, when we really see injustice, inequality, racism, and we can't turn our heads any longer, we can't not turn our heads any longer, when we can no longer turn away. Is this when our faith grows, like that mustard seed plant, from that tiny seed into that giant tree? Telling our stories, sharing our joy and our pain, encourages our faith. It invites us to not only see with clear eyes, but to turn our heads and act. Let us water our mustard seeds of hope. Feed our seeds of gratitude and gifts. Have us act upon those gifts that God has provided to each one of us. Our God is with us at every turn, every turn of our action. Amen. Let's pray. Loving Creator, you bless us abundantly in all things. We give you thanks that with your abundance there is room for all creation without needing to worry about whether there's enough. Help us to see that there is enough to go around, ensuring that each of us has what we need to experience life abundantly. We're grateful for this opportunity you provide for us to be generous on every occasion. We pray today for all of those families whose time was cut short as children were taken from their homes and people who they loved and who loved them. Loving God, we ask that a blanket of peace be offered over all those whose hearts break this day. Grant us courage, grant us wisdom to do and be more like your son Jesus. Help us to listen more and speak less to help us be changed by those around us who fight for justice in an unjust world. We pray today for the family of Lisa, who said goodbye to a mom, a nana, a great nana and aunt. Have Trinity prayers continue to resonate with them this day. We offer prayers of healing for Michael, who's home from hospital. We pray that his treatments provide relief and energy in these days. We pray too for Colette, her strength and healing. We ask these prayers and those that are on our hearts. We bring them to God now. Let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is, There is a time that we must rise. It's in More Voices 165. And it is lovely.
As you go from this place, go with the trust in God, the source of all our blessings. Go with the spirit of gratitude, trusting that God uses us like planted seeds to sow a bountiful harvest, even if our faith is the size of a mustard seed. Go now, looking for the people and places to share generosity, as we are people rooted in God's abundance. Share our gifts. Sharing our gifts is the action of God's people. May the love of God surround you. The peace of Christ be with you, and the power of the Holy Spirit sustain you, now and always. Amen.